Hi everyone, my name is Jason Matthew. Uh, this is the continuation video of the AP Joining Troubleshooting uh, series. We already have uh, part one and two posted in my channel. This is uh, the third one uh, of that series. We uh, covered the physical connectivity issues. We covered the PoE related uh, stuffs we have to uh, do the troubleshooting. Then we also covered the IP addressing uh, issues that can happen in your network. Then uh, layer 3 connectivity, how to do the troubleshooting uh, on the layer 3 connectivity and your gateway communication and your WL, uh, the communication between WLC and AP. Now we will go into the, uh, the, uh, the one um, that we are going to face on any joining issues, uh, it, uh, all the cap app related issues. So in this video, I will be uh, concentrating more on the cap app uh, related uh, issues. So let's uh, get started. The first thing is how your network is going to provide the data or the information about the WLC to your uh, AP. So AP will be uh, coming from factory default settings or it will be uh, coming from any kind of situation, factory reset or anything. In that scenario, uh, this AP should be able to uh, find the WLC from your network. So when we talk about uh, cap app discovery, the first thing is uh, we always uh, stick with the DSCP option 43 you make sure you have option 43 enabled on your DSCP server your DSCP can uh, DSCP server can be a Linux one it can be a Windows one it can be a iOS router or the switch but you have to make sure your option 43 is configured on uh, that particular DSCP server and you have to make sure uh, your uh, DSCP server is providing that information to your AP to uh, try to send the joint request on that so if you are using any specific uh, vendor specific options, so VCI string is the one I'm referring to. So for an example, if you have a specific AP model that needs to be joined to one specific controller due to the hardware limitation or the software limitation, then uh, you have to give that option 60 that provides uh, this IP address, the I controller IP address only to those AP models. So you can find that VCI string uh, for each and every uh, AP model from the Cisco sites. So I already have another video that shows how to do this uh, cap up uh, discovery protocol uh, VCI string man uh, mapping. So you can get the VCI string for your uh, AP model and apply that on your vendor specific options under 60. Then uh, only those particular AP models will receive the uh, IP address of that WLC. For an example, in the same network, you want to provide uh, legacy APs with one controller and the uh, newer APs with the other controller. So that will be uh, done through this VCI strings. And uh, next one is uh, hexadecimal value, how you are uh, putting that value on your network. So you can provide IP address, you can provide hexadecimal value. So hexadecimal value you can give two IPs uh, into combined string. And you can also use um, uh, this uh, IP address also, but Hexadecimal value always works. So I'll prefer uh, personally, I'll prefer to configure hexadecimal value. You should know how to configure that hexadecimal value or uh, the IP address on the option 43 on your server. The option 43 configure on Windows server is different than uh, the other OS types and everything. So uh, you should know how to configure that uh, hexadecimal value into the DSCP server options. If you're configuring option 43 in hexadecimal value inside Windows uh, devices, so you uh, you go through that configuration uh, process. Uh, there are a lot of documents available for that. You make sure you are following that. Otherwise, you will be configuring something, but you will not be able to uh, get the IP on the AP side. So AP console will show that uh, it's not getting the option 43 from the server. So you um, find out how to configure this option 43 on your server the server you are going to put it in your network if it's ios you can follow the uh, below example uh, i given this example here so yes uh, you have to uh, put that type length value on the uh, hexadecimal so this is the option how to uh, do that uh, in your uh, network so if you have an ip address convert that ip address if you have multiple wlc's convert the ip address into uh, hexadecimal value and if you are providing only one ip uh, like this uh, only one IP for the WLC one, then you can use um, this F104 for the um, F104 uh, for one IP. If you are putting uh, two IPs, you put F108. So that's how you normally do it. 
if you are doing it on the ios device uh, means the cisco uh, switches or routers as a, a dscp pole then you can put a command like this so you have to convert your ip address dscp uh, into hexadecimal for the dscp option 43 then uh, put it on the um, uh, uh, on the uh, dscp server so um, personal experience option 43 with hexadecimal value always works you you can uh, use that so option for uh, uh, 241 is also there but yeah always uh, use option 43 that is the best bet on the um, uh, discovery side the option 43 side so if you are using uh, vendor specific uh, options that also works with option 43 but you make sure you are putting the right vendor specific string and that is getting matched with your ap model and your ap model is able to get the ip address based on that so you make sure uh, option 43 is configured in the right way and another thing i already covered in the other section your uh, dacp server you have to make sure that service is running even if you are using windows or uh, linux if that service or the daemon, uh, daemon in the background is not working then uh, you will not be able to get that ip in, uh, information so we see in that scenario that uh, the pool is not activated uh, maybe that pool itself is missing so you make sure the specific pool for the ap is served by the dscp server but uh, any any kind of combination so you make sure that and the option 43 will work under percentage with uh, hexadecimal value and next one is dns uh, uh, requirement uh, so uh, if option 43 is not configured on your network and you have an option to set the um, dns entry uh, for uh, WLC, uh, you can see here uh, these are the two names that are going to be uh, uh, tried out from the AP side. So, whenever AP comes up uh, as per the CAPAP discovery process, the Cisco APs will be trying to resolve this name. So, that will be Cisco CAPAP controller local uh, domain, or the second one will be LWAP. The, uh, LWAP is for the uh, legacy AP models, but when we are running the rcv image or something like that the old images to recover from a condition or something like that then um, maybe it will be trying for lwap also so if you are trying to use the dns uh, entry on your controller uh, controller discovery then you try to put uh, this name for both the names so at any time you you want to give this information to your ap right so you try to add uh, the controller ip into both the things so local uh, local domain will get changed with your local domain on your network so change that accordingly but when whenever you are using the dns you make sure your va valid dns server is available on your network and even dscp is providing that dns entry to your uh, uh, your ap so if uh, if that is a factory default ap uh, you, if you don't have any information then um, you have to make sure your controller uh, IP address is configured for DNS and that DNS server is serving that network otherwise if you are serving by different DNS server and you don't have this entry then it will not work so make sure the AP VLAN is, a, uh, is having a valid DNS server and that DNS server is having this entries for CAPAP and LWAP uh, controller name and uh, next one is uh, your firewall is not blocking anything for DNS request so uh, chances are very less but you make sure the port 53 is enabled for DNS and uh, it's allowed on the AP network to uh, resolve this name. So you, you just make sure uh, DNS is working for your network and APs are able to join. Now uh, let's talk about the uh, WLC information already stored on the AP. So whenever uh, we talk about AP joining to the controller, after the first successful join on any controller, it will be storing that IP information on uh, NVRAM of the AP. So uh, whenever this AP reboots or uh, try to uh, do that uh, uh, cap up discovery again, it will try to always try to send a join request for that IP that is stored in NVRAM. So that's a uh, thing you have to keep it in mind. The factory default AP and the uh, AP that is already part of some wireless network will have two different behavior in background. So uh, you make sure if you have already uh, join on the controller, your APs are already joined on any controller, that IP address is reachable uh, for the AP. So it, you always uh, do that. And the next one is uh, priming. So the higher availability is also available on AP side. In case of N plus one, N plus N uh, kind of scenario, your 
AP can have three different IP address stored with the priority primary, secondary, and tertiary. So that will be used for the discovery process if your uh, AP is already primed. So we are not talking about an AP that is already uh, it's coming as a factory default settings. So we are talking about an AP that is already part of your network once. So it will try to uh, get the IP address from the WLC. Uh, uh, like it will store the IP address in NVRAM and it will try to uh, join on that. So um, the WLC, even if you don't have HA configured, it can try to get the IP address from the NVRAM. It priming, you can force the AP to join on those particular uh, WLCs based on the order that you provided in the high availability under uh, AP. The next one is the AP also have a capability to uh, find the mobility members of the WLC that is currently it's associated to. So for an example, it's associated to WLC1 and WLC2 is the mobility member of uh, same group. In that case, AP will store both the IP addresses of WLC1 and 2 in the NVRAM. So just in case of uh, WLC1 is um, uh, failed or it's not reachable, it will try to join on the mobility number mobility member of WLC2. That is another one. So you can use any of these three uh, models. So the first one is automatic. Uh, your AP is already associated to some WLC and it will try to uh, uh, join to that. And uh, next one, you have the priming that is already provided under AP and that will be the second one. Then third one, the mobility group members of that uh, WLC, what is associated uh, in the first time. So you, uh, any of these things, uh, AP will try automatically to join on these things and it will start to uh, uh, serve the clients. Next one is uh, uh, IP helper address. This is another way to uh, point your AP uh, to join on a controller. For an example, you don't have any uh, idea how many APs are going to come in and uh, I can't say that, but uh, normally if you want to use helper address, for an example, you have a scenario that you have an AP uh, and that guy uh, will not be able to support through any uh, settings like DSCP option 43 or DNS or anything. For an example, you are getting an AP and you are statically configuring an IP and you, you want to point that to uh, your uh, WLC. So in that case, you, you can also use helper address. So uh, problem in uh, helper address is by default, it will not uh, forward the uh, protocol UDP that port numbers. So you have to uh, add the WLC management IP as a helper address on your uh, VLAN gateway. After that, you uh, enable the forward protocol UDP on 12222 and 2223. And um, cap, for cap up, use, uh, use 5246 and 5247. So if you does this, uh, even your AP VLAN will be able to send the broadcast request to uh, as a unicast to your uh, WLC and get a response back. So this way also you can um, you can try to do the discovery and um, uh, this one will help you uh, in uh, like without having DNS or DSCP in your network if you want to uh, make sure your APs are joining on the right WLC. This is one way you can configure it. It's, it's supported, so you can try it if you have any limitation on the other side of it. Then uh, next one is uh, UDP ports. Um, so CAPAP uses different ports, LAP uses uh, different ports. Always try to enable both the ports because uh, you can leave LWAP if you have the 100% guarantee that you are not going to get any legacy APs or any APs that is coming with a uh, recovery image. So in that case, you can leave that. Otherwise, uh, uh, keep both the port, uh, ports enabled. So this, this way you can make sure it's, uh, it's, uh, it's able to uh, serve the uh, APs uh, with the right UDP ports. So uh, after that, uh, the next thing is the path MTU. So path MTU, um, by default, it's, it can uh, APs uh, start with the uh, MTU discovery and the dynamic algorithm will uh, start in background with the lowest MTU size and it can go up to 1500. So it will it will try to change that and find out the uh, right thing. But uh, I just added this one to make sure um, you are uh, not losing this point uh, in the discovery process. So path MTU uh, plays a uh, good role on your network and always try to uh, avoid the fragmentation happening on the control packet. So you can you can choose your right um, MTU size of your network. It uh, varies about uh, with your network uh, settings. So 
always try to keep that under the uh, limit so that uh, the fragmentation is not happening on your there is no recommended value you have to find out the right value for your network so it can be 1200 it can be 1250 so it depends on your network you have to find that value once you got the right value then it will always uh, help you to uh, avoid the fragmentation side and it's always uh, always going to give a better result on the performance side uh, and joining process and everything so I just want to capture that point here. That's the only reason I uh, provided this. Then other than that, um, the CAPAP discovery process, I have another video that talks about the entire uh, CAPAP process. Uh, the one thing I didn't mention here is uh, the manual configuration on the AP. So if you want to configure the AP manually, there is a command uh, uh, directly. You can configure the primary base and secondary base on the AP side and it will join on that if you don't have anything. And you have the console access so uh, getting a console access on a um, uh, already mounted ap is very difficult but in case if you are uh, getting stuck with any kind of uh, discovery process is not working then in that case you can directly give the uh, ip address of uh, wlc through the console ap console that is already covered in a different video so i'm not uh, not going to put it here so uh, with that, uh, we are done with the uh, cap app uh, side of it. I uh, hope this one will help you to uh, configure uh, your network to uh, make sure your APs are able to find the WLC and able to join on the WLC side. I'll, I'll cover the rest of the things in the next video because we already uh, crossed that uh, uh, the uh, normal timeline we keep it in the video. If you are looking for this particular flow, uh, I have uh, one LinkedIn article posted in my LinkedIn page that will provide you the link for uh, all the PDF format and the HTML format and uh, JPG format. Those are the three formats I uploaded into my uh, LinkedIn page. So you can follow the uh, LinkedIn article to get that high, high resolution picture. As I said earlier, uh, you can find this uh, flow uh, in my LinkedIn page. So this is my LinkedIn uh, link for that then you have um, a shorter link that uh, directly point to the um, the article i posted in the linkedin so you can follow this link uh, for that article then uh, this is my uh, youtube channel that is cisco networking if you want to see the next videos on the same topic uh, you can go and uh, subscribe this channel for uh, getting that notification so uh, i'm going to close this video here uh, we will see in the uh, next video for the same troubleshooting continuation. Thank you for watching.